The views and opinions expressed on Unlock Your Wealth Radio are those of the host, guests, and callers only and are not necessarily the views of Unlock Your Wealth Radio, Heather Wagonhalls, or Success Publishing International. More willpower than a barefoot woman at a shoe sale. Able to stretch a single paycheck for an entire month. Makes money concepts easier than third grade math. Introducing your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagonhalls. Work all day, stress all night. Take your mind off your money, focus on your life. Money don't matter or the stuff it bought. It's the way you think, not what you've got, yeah. Unlock Your Wealth Radio starts now. Get your money man right. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm so excited you decided to join us. We are at the beginning of our new radio show season. So by the end of the year, your money management skills will be top notch. I'm Heather Wagonhalls, thanking you for joining us. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio. This is our sexy and 17 edition. It's our season 17. I can't believe we've made it that far in such a quick period of time. It seems like just yesterday, We moved from terrestrial radio to syndication in the internet, and here we are 17 seasons later, and I'm so excited because today's key, our first key in the Keys to Riches Financial Wellness series is acceptance and affirmation as we start all over again working to manage your money in a fashion that helps you get your money mind right so your wealth and happiness will follow. We also have in store for you our money word of the day. And uh, it's a good one because how do we assess value and what are different types of value? We're going to talk about that coming up. Now, you are probably familiar with government shutdowns. Uh, We're going to talk about that in our Minutes on Your Money segment. Our trivia question, as always, is going to be based on last week's key, which was our final key, Become a Voracious Reader. And to kick off Season 17, we've got two fabulous people. First, our featured guest is best-selling author Larry Wingett. He will be popping by to put the fire under your fanny to grow a pair, and that will all make sense soon enough. And this season, we have a new Unlock Your Wealth protege, and we will meet her coming up, a new up-and-coming country music sensation. And that'll be Lauren Rumpler. You'll meet her later. As always, we will talk about your money, your credit, and how to get ahead in any economy. And we will also show you how to manage your money easier, saving time, reducing stress, using these proven techniques for you to create unlimited wealth and happiness. And I'm so excited to bring that to you. Uh, So for those of you who like free stuff, I'm so excited because we have our trivia question for the week. Now, if you are an Insiders Club member, you are automatically entered to win in our weekly giveaways. And we have a new app coming out for Insiders Club members only. And it's the only way to get all of the good stuff, all the secret bonus content, not included in the price of today's show. Well, it's free. So you will have access to all of that stuff as an Insiders Club member, but you get to be a part of the weekly giveaways for nothing automatically included. But let's say you're not a member. Never fear. Our trivia question is here. And if you would like to complete, compete, blah, blah, as we tie our tongues on this episode, if you would like to compete for great money management tools, let's answer a trivia question, shall we? So this week's trivia question is, last week we talked about how to get started in our Become a Voracious Reader key and reading for success. We have a particular strategy and it starts off with a numeral. And this numeral is also in reference to the number of minutes or pages you should read every day to become successful. Because remember, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are our readers. So if you think you have the answer to this week's trivia question, and for those of you who are regular listeners, you have a leg up on the competition, 
But just visit our website because you can win one of three ways. One, you can call in to win, and that number is 1-866-966-9420. That's 866-966-9420. Or... You can hop in the chat room and join us live and share your potential right answer and see if you can win. Or if you are listening from a podcast, never fear because we have email here to save you. And if you think you have the potential right answer, just send us an email at trivia at uywradio.com. Trivia at uywradio.com. And don't be discouraged if you're not listening live because if the answer wasn't answered or if the question wasn't answered correctly that's okay because you could still win fabulous prizes so uh we have an interesting minutes on your money segment because of course this week the government is shutting down uh so here are seven things that you won't have to worry about in a government shutdown and this is from cnn money and if you are worried Don't because there are some services that are deemed essential and these areas of the governments will not be shut down. So Social Security and Medicare, if you're concerned that it's going to halt your checks, don't worry because you will still make your money. Social Security funding is mandatory according to the government and so you will automatically be authorized to get your money. So you don't have to worry about that. Unemployment checks. This is interesting. While the federal government's monthly jobs report could be delayed by the shutdown, the same is not true for unemployment benefits. So you will still get your check just as always. And passports don't cancel your vacation because even though passport offices are closed during the shutdown in the 90s, it will stay open this time around according to the State Department's current shutdown plan because they generate enough fees to pay for their own operations. How wonderful and how disappointing that the regular set of government doesn't do that. Also, air travel, you might not realize this, but air traffic control is a government organization and so it falls into the essential camp so you will be safe to fly. Food stamps are okay, mail delivery and as well as the federal court system. So if you have a federal court case or a jury summons, Guess what? You still got to go. So uh, that's it for our seven things you don't have to worry about. So hopefully, if you were concerned, I have allayed your concerns with the help of CNN Money. We have so much more in store coming up. We've got Larry Wingett and our Unlock Your Wealth protege, as well as our Keys to Riches. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio with me, Heather Wagon Halls. We'll be right back with more coming up after this. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside they knew they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Like, has your cell phone or iPod ever totally run out of battery before? Maybe you're somewhere without power, like fishing, camping, or the beach. Now you can have all the power you need. The K3 Charger by Kinesis Industries uses wind and sun to charge your devices anytime, day or night. Use the wind and sun to store up charging power or charge your device right on the spot. Available now for $99.95 at www.kinesisindustries.com. That's Kinesis, K-I-N. E-S-I-S Industries dot com Like 
Go there totally. Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. We offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona, guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio, and I am she, your maven of moolah, Heather Wagon Hall. And in my hot little hands, I am holding your moolah word of the day. And I did mention that it has to do with value. And that is one of the challenges that we have when we go to manage our money is assessing value to items. Well, here is a word that perhaps can help you distinguish between different types of value and assess value. And this is the hardest one. So I thought, let's start our season off with the hardest word I could possibly find. And it's actually a phrase, not just a word, but intrinsic value. What is intrinsic value? And according to InvestorsWords.com, the actual value of a security as opposed to its market price or book value. The intrinsic value includes other variables such as brand name, trademarks, and copyrights that are often difficult to calculate. And sometimes it's not always accurately reflected in the market place. So one way to look at it is that the market capitalization is the price that investors are willing to pay for the company. And an intrinsic value is the value that was what the company is really worth. And so the company could have like a $30 stock, but because of crazy things going on in the marketplace, news and all of that stuff, government shutdowns and who knows what plaguing your life and your stock market at the moment, that value can be like at $10 or it can be at 40. It could be overvalued. It all depends on what the news is going on. But the intrinsic value is what it's really worth. And different investors use different techniques to calculate this, but essentially that's what intrinsic value is. What is something really worth? So go out and start identifying what has intrinsic value based on its actual value. And I can give you a perfect example from when I used to actively sell real estate in the residential markets. And that's why I kind of stopped that and flipped into managing investor portfolios instead because people think their house is worth so much more than what it is than market value because they've put their blood, sweat, and tears in it. They painted every single corner. They hung every inch of crown molding and they're like, but, 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 but I did all of that work. And guess what? It doesn't matter. Like while your intrinsic value may be high, it only matters what somebody is willing to pay you for that particular investment. So that's enough with our uh, moolah word of the day, because I know that you are eagerly anticipatory of our guests that are coming up. So shall we talk about who is on today's show? We have Larry Winget, the pit bull of personal development and five time now to be six time New York Times, Wall Street Journal bestselling author. He's spoken to over 400 of the 500 of the fortune companies. He's an international speaker hall of fame member. He's been host of his own TV show on A and E and is he is a returning guest and one of our most favorite because he tells it like it is. So let's have a chat with Larry, shall we? Welcome to the show, Larry. Hey, I appreciate you having me. Thanks. It's so good to have you back again, and I'm so excited because I've been watching your Facebook contest. Let's talk about Grow Up Hair. How did you come up with that title? You know, I write good books, but I write great titles. When you start off with Shut Up, Stop Whining, and Get a Life as my first bestseller, and that we've gone all the way through the cycle of you broke because you want to be, your kids are your own fault, people are idiots, and I can prove it, and now we're in the grow up there. You know, when I write a book, it's always because 
I look at society and I look at what's going on in our country and in the news and so forth, and it bothers me. So I write about whatever is bothering me most at the time. And what bothered me most, and the reason I wrote this book, is I think we've become this country that is full of wimps and weenies, and we've become a society of victims and entitled, and we need to learn what, what we stand for and understand what we believe in and stand up for it and speak up for it and get off the government dole and relying on other people and learn again to stand on our own two feet. That is so well said. You know, I remember my grandfather used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Yep. And I just, I keep th- hearing that resonating in my head. And we have whitewashed, for, for lack of a better term, the only thing I can think of is we have whitewashed our society. You know, we can't call illegal aliens, illegal aliens anymore. We have to call them undocumented workers. And the more we sanitize and whitewash things, the less we can deal with them. But these angers and resentments are just, they just continue to grow. Well, that's all that political correctness. And I, really blame political correctness as being one of the most castrating things that ever happened to our society. And certainly it starts with our language, and our language has changed and softened. Um, You you can't say the truth anymore and get by with it. I watched a woman the other day on television crying and sobbing that her friends had called her a liar. She said, that's not fair. I will admit that I am truth challenged. Truth challenge. What? That's a new one for me. <laughs> yeah, truth challenge. Listen, lady, if you're not telling the truth, you're nothing but a damn liar. That's what it comes down to. And it's fair to call somebody a liar. And if it hurts their feelings, good. We need to step on a few toes again to wake people up to where we are. I agree with you wholeheartedly. When I w- accused somebody of lying, they're like, no, I just didn't say anything. And I'm like, well, withholding the truth, if you know it to be different, is a lie. Yeah, but lying by omission uh, is just as guilty, believe me. And you know, that, that's just a simple example. This stuff is everywhere. In, in Australia, they don't let uh, Santa Claus say ho, 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 because we all know what a ho is. Yes. Santa Claus has to say ha, ha, ha. Seriously. Oh, That's serious? how silly it is. No, I'm not making that up. Oh you can't gosh. make this stupidity up. So when you take this entitled society who loves to play the victim, it's never their fault. It's always someone else's fault or something's fault. And you couple that with political correctness and this I'm special mentality, you end up with the disaster we have that has become our society. Why do you think we've backslid so far? Is it accountability or something else? Well, people will get by with everything they can get by with. That is human nature. We all get by with everything we can get by with. And we have allowed people to get by with way too much and not forced accountability. It started in our own families. We didn't force our children to be accountable. Our parents were not raised that way. Our parents were held to be accountable, and they lived through the Depression, and it was hard on them. And then they said, I'm going to make sure it's easier for my children. And they did not do us uh, any good by putting us in that position. They should have been harder on us. And then we should have been harder on our kids because then we ended up with the Occupy movement because we never forced our kids to be responsible for anything. So I say it started with the families. I I think that's a very fair assessment because that's where we first learn our boundaries and what's right and wrong. I mean, we get imprinted with that code and then that's what we move forward into the world with, even though... I, I, I just get so unglued when people sit there and say, oh, well, you should just let kids be kids. And I'm like, your job is not to let kids be kids. Your job is to raise productive, contributing human beings. Well, that's the whole point of my book, Your Kids Are Your Own Falls. That's the whole premise of the book. I say we do not raise kids. We create responsible, productive adults. And so, uh, and, and I carried that theme over into grow a pair. And you got to grow a pair with your family. You know, parents need a, I mean, kids need a parent. 
They need boundaries set. They need consequences imposed on them. They are, they need our unconditional love, but they need to have other things communicated to them like this is good, this is bad, this is acceptable, this will never fly. And when you impose those kind of expectations and then also communicate the consequences, that's when you start really training kids to be productive adults. And that's where the growth occurs in their critical thinking skills. This is such an amazing conversation, Larry. And when we get back from the break, I want to talk more about what's in Grow a Pair. You are listening to Larry Wingett on Unlock Your Wealth Radio with Heather Wagonhalls. Stay tuned for more coming up right after this. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside they knew they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Like, has your cell phone or iPod ever totally run out of battery before? Maybe you're somewhere without power, like fishing, camping, or the beach. Now you can have all the power you need. The K3 Charger by Kinesis Industries uses wind and sun to charge your devices anytime, day or night. Use the wind and sun to store up charging power or charge your device right on the spot. Available now for $99.95 at www.kinesisindustries.com. That's Kinesis, K-I-N. E-S-I-S Industries.com Like, go there totally! Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. We offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona. Guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio, and I am she, your pervert of prosperity, Heather Wagonhalls, and I'm so excited to be joined by Larry Wingett once again, kicking off our new radio show season. And the timing is perfect because in addition to learning how to grow our wallets, Larry is going to share with us how to grow a pair, aren't you, Larry? Yep, and the best way to grow a wallet is to grow your pair. Believe me, you have to learn to speak up, stand up, know right and wrong, take control of your business, take control of your future, and uh, empower yourself. And that's about growing a pair. And when you do those things, one of the outcomes is you will be richer. And and that is a great thing because when we have money, we have power and control over our own futures. And that's so awesome. So let's just kind of role play here. And let's say I'm a member of this, you know, out there confused generation and I don't have a pair. So what do I need to do to, to start growing a pair? First of all, recognize that you don't have a pair. I'll guarantee you if you walked up the average person on the street and, and say, do you have a pair? They will go, well, shoot, yes, I do, absolutely. I, I am strong-willed and on and on and on. And then I sort of have a test. And so if I ask the average person, do your kids talk back to you? The average person, if they told you the truth, would have to say yes. And if your kids talk back to you, you don't have a pair as a parent. Uh, do you eat cold food in restaurants? Do you accept bad service when you uh, deal with a company? Uh, do you pick up the slack for lazy coworkers because you don't have the guts to call them out on it? 
Do you let people mistreat you? Do you let your friends talk bad behind your back and you know about it and you don't say anything to them? Do you go in a theater and let the people around you text on their phones or maybe even have full-out conversations without telling them to shut the hell up? If you do any of those things, you don't have a pair. So go through that sort of a list. And that list and many, many other questions are in the book to first understand, do you have a pair or not? Stop thinking you do when you really don't. And so once you know that you either have a pair or don't have a pair, then there are some steps you can go through to start growing one. And that fits in perfectly with this week's key, acceptance and affirmation. You have to realize you have an issue first before you can move to solve it. And I think that fits in so perfectly. So after I recognize the fact that, well, now I just answered yes to a few of those questions, so perhaps I don't have a pair. So now I know I don't have a pair. So what's my next step into getting one? Okay, first, never whine. Don't whine, no complain. First of all, uh, nobody cares. Nobody cares that you have problems. They're just thankful it's not their problem. <laughs> uh, and besides that, we're all dealing with our own crap, and we don't want to hear anybody else's crap. So stop fooling yourself and lying to yourself, thinking other people care about the fact that you have problems. Trust me, they don't. Second, if you whine about your problems, that means you are wallowing in your victimhood. Stop wallowing in your victimhood. Grow up here and go to work on your problems. And if you're not willing to go to work on your problems, at least do yourself and the rest of the world a favor and shut the hell up about them. Okay. That's the first step. Number two would be get yourself some plans. You talk about money and wealth. You'll never be wealthy until you get in control of your money, which means you need a budget. You need a plan for your money. People who have a budget, who have a plan, feel empowered and will act differently. People who have a plan for their life, for their career, for their weekend, feel empowered and will act and behave differently. So have a plan. And the next step would be know what you believe in and know what you stand for. If I walked up to the average guy on the street and said, listen, give me five things that you believe in that you will never compromise no matter how much pressure you're put under, they would look at me like a dog looking at a ceiling fan. They wouldn't have a clue what I was even talking about. So know what you believe in. For instance, in my life, I won't be lied to. Honesty is number one on my, on my plate. Nothing will affect our relationship more than you being dishonest with me. If you ever lie to me, I will cut you off at the knees and we will never speak, never do business ever again. You can bring me the worst problem in the world. And as long as you are telling me the truth, we will deal with it. But if you lie to me, I'm done. Yep, I agree. That's a good position to be in. So most people don't know what they believe in, don't know what they stand for, and that's one of the things I ask people to do. What do you believe in that you won't compromise? Come up with some things, your principles, your core principles that are non-negotiable in your life, and learn to stand up for those things and speak up for those things. Okay, so I want to do all of that, but I'm really worried about how that's going to be perceived. What do you tell those folks? Well, first of all, if you're worried about what, how things are going to be perceived when you're standing up for your principles, you don't have a pair. People who believe in something and stand up for them, just say it and let the chips fall where they may. If you're constantly going to be looking for the approval of other people, you're never going to be happy. You, you will, I guarantee you, though, you will start to find some happiness when you know what you believe and stand up for them, regardless of what other people say. The people who seek approval from others are those people whose mamas and daddies told them that they were special. And then they went into the real world and found out that they weren't really so special after all, that they were going to be judged based on their performance. And then when they started being judged, it hurt their feelings. And then you started having the real world look at you and you started dealing socially with other people and they're going, ooh, I don't like you. And those people are crushed. You know, we've got people who commit suicide because somebody said something bad about them on Facebook or Twitter. What has happened to us that we are that in that kind of need of validation from others? Get over it. It's disheartening. It truly is because, you know, it all starts with our individual self-esteem. And I think growing a pair has everything to do with our view of our own self-worth. And I think that that's some um, amazing advice. So one more question here. What if somebody says, okay, so I want to grow a pair. Now I've grown a pair and I've stood up to all these people that have, you know, taken advantage of me and have lied to me and done all of these things and I understand what my principles are. Now I have alienated everybody that I know. Then what do I do? Start surrounding yourself with people who are more in alignment with your beliefs. 
big deal that you you know if you've got more than four close friends you're lying to yourself to begin with you know in our lives we have a handful of people who align with us but we like to call and i think that's facebook's fault we call these people friends they're not our friends they don't even know your name they don't know anything about you but we've got that we become disillusioned with what a real, real friend is a real friend is in alignment with you and ex- Expects the best from you and will impose consequences on you when you're an idiot. We think a friend is a person who's going to come up and throw their arms around us and say, honey, you poor thing, it's a cold, cruel world out there. And a real friend is not that. A real friend is a person who will come up and grab you by the shoulders and shake you and look you in the eye and say, are you an idiot? Don't do this anymore. You deserve better than this and you need to behave properly. That's a friend. So, yeah, you're going to alienate some people, but when you start standing up for your beliefs and start doing the right thing every time and living a life of honesty and integrity, you will attract the right kind of people to you, and you'll get new and better and real friends and associates. Larry, you have some of the greatest wisdom, and I love how you just call it like you see it. That's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan, and I'm always giving your books away to folks because I think that they make so much of a difference. So if people are interested in learning how to grow a pair, where can they get your book? Where can they find you on Facebook, Twitter, all of that good stuff? You know, you can go to LarryWingett.com and find out about everything about me. I've also got a series on YouTube called Ask Larry Anything, where people ask me questions and I answer them, and it's a weekly series. They can follow me at the Larry Wingett fan page on Facebook that is very interactive. I mix it up with folks there. You can follow me on Twitter, at Larry Wingett. And as far as finding the book, Grow a Pair, it just hit the bestseller list. It'll be on the bestseller list again this week and next week uh, for sure. It's doing great right now. It is available everywhere books are sold. Go online, Amazon, BNN online, any of those places, or walk in any bookstore and ask for Grow a Pair. You'll find it. Well, congratulations to yet another bestseller to your credit. You are always entertaining. Six bestsellers. It's so good to have you on again. And everyone, don't touch that dial. Stay tuned for more Unlock Your Wealth Radio coming up right after this. Commander Marty Logan here from the Top Gun Seminars. What I've learned over the years is that the most successful people in life have coaches to guide them along their chosen path. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Jordan, Tony Stewart, Tom Hopkins, Kathy Colby all had coaches. Whether it was their father, someone else's father, or another person who helped them to shape their desires into an achievable path to success with a system of accountability where quitting was the only way to fail. Each of these people had someone who didn't see them as they first were, but as the person inside they knew they could easily become. Financial coaching can be the single addition you need to become financially independent. Call the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation now for your free consultation. 1-866-966-9420. That toll-free number again is 1-866-966-9420. Or visit us on the web at www.unlockyourwealth.com. I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Too much month left over at the end of the money? Tired of paying off debt again like a slave? Then tune in to my one-minute update on Fort Myers Beach Radio for your morning cup of money motivation. And for more tips, visit crackingyourmoneycode.com. Like, has your cell phone or iPod ever totally run out of battery before? Maybe you're somewhere without power, like fishing, camping, or the beach. Now you can have all the power you need. The K3 Charger by Kinesis Industries uses wind and sun to charge your devices anytime, day or night. Use the wind and sun to store up charging power or charge your device right on the spot. Available now for $99.95 at www.kinesisindustries.com. That's Kinesis, K-I-N-E-S-I-S, industries.com. Like, go there totally. Greenback is your neighborhood lender for auto title loans. We offer fast and easy cash title loans for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Keep your car with title loans from $100 to $50,000. There are no year or mileage limits at Greenback. And we offer the cheapest rates in Arizona, guaranteed. For more information, visit GreenbackTitleLoans.com or call 480-926-6666. 
Welcome back to the show, everyone. You are listening to Unlock Your Wealth Radio, and I am she, your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagon Halls. And it is that time again for our Keys to Riches segment, and we have a new Unlock Your Wealth protege for this season. I am so excited because we haven't had one for a while, and we've had young ones, old ones, guys and girls, and we have a country music sensation, up-and-coming singer, Lauren Rumpler is is joining us and I am so excited to have her on. I met her at the Atlas Summit this summer and she is a good little objectivist from the Atlas Society and she does so many amazing things in the community. She is a social media relations expert and she's worked for the Libertarian Party and now she is working on gubernatorial candidate for New Hampshire as well as current State House of Representatives, George Lambert. And she's working on his campaign, and I'm so excited to have her on because she's had some unique experiences about money, and she is looking forward to being very, very wealthy in her near future, and she wants to get on the right path, and she has chosen the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation to pursue her financial literacy. So let's welcome Lauren to the broadcast. Welcome to the show, Lauren. Well, thanks for having me on, Heather. I'm excited that not only are you my real world protege, but you're also going to be this season's Unlock Your Wealth protege. I think that that's pretty cool that you have an interest in finance. I'm, I'm very excited about finance and I'm very excited to be your new protege. Now, the first thing that we do with everyone who goes through our Unlock Your Wealth coaching program is everybody has to take the perceptions about money questionnaire. And this begins our organic assessment process. And it, it's done again in the 12th key because we want to measure where we are. And then we want to see what, if anything, has changed about how we feel or our attitudes about money. So I'd like to go through some of those questions with you to kind of get a feel for where you are in your thoughts about money at this point before we start getting into any of the great tools and the the individual modules we're going to be working on. So the first question... That sounds great. Awesome. Well, the first question I want to ask you is, what do you think about money now? Um. I love money. Uh, As an objectivist, uh, I believe that money is the root of all good and happiness. And I think that um, it's a tool that you can use to buy the things that make you happy and successful in life. I agree. So one of the neat things uh, that you and I have in common that many of the listeners are probably not aware of is that our mutual connection came from the Atlas Summit this summer, and we met at the Ayn Rand Objectivist Conference that's put on by the Atlas Society. And for those folks that aren't familiar, why don't you share the the, the creed of Galt's Gulch? Um, by my life and my love of it, I shall never live for the sake of another man, nor allow another man to live for the sake of my life. Perfect. Or something very close to that. <laughs> yes, I'll give you a pass. But yes, you got you got it in its concept. So that's all about taking personal responsibility for your own actions and choices. And w- what does that mean to you when, when you talk or when you say those words, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that I am responsible for my own happiness. And I do not expect anyone to be in charge of my happiness as well as vice versa. I am not in charge of anyone else's happiness and I do not want to stand in the way of someone else's happiness as well. Okay, but that's really great. It's a good perspective. You have a little bit different perspective than others do about money because you have this accountability that objectivism brings that others won't have. But let's talk specifically about money. What are some of the experiences with money that you learned growing up? Um, Well, uh, I grew up in a uh, upper-middle-class family, So, uh, money was never an issue for me. Um, I was, I didn't have my first job until I was about 18 and it was 
at a restaurant where my mother was friends with the manager. So uh, money for me has always just been a part of my life. It's actually surprising that I ended up uh, being so interested in money and caring about where it came from and how I acquired it instead of just um, wanting it in my life. So I care about how I acquire it now. Mm-hmm. And what what made that different for you? Um, I believe it was watching some of my other friends who were not as well off as my family and watching um, how happy they were in earning the money. And I never felt that happiness with having been given everything. Uh, so I wanted to have that sort of happiness. And I, I wanted the wealth, but I also really wanted the happiness that came from earning it. Okay. Um, now, some of the things that you saw about, that, that you actively watched or learned about money when you were a kid, what were, can you give me an example of something that you learned about money? Um, let's see. Uh, I, I, I went to math class. <laughs> and they taught me a little bit about money. Um, I know there were discussions in the basement with my family about what money would go where. Um, but ultimately, I didn't really learn anything about money until pretty recently when I started, when I graduated and joined the workforce. And then I found out that um, a lot about uh, how to manage um, getting what I need and getting what I want and still having money left over to survive to the next month. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a question that most um, people don't really think about, but when we talk about learning, especially as a kid, more is caught than taught. And so while we actively hear somebody say something, um, it's not, you know, um, do as I say, it's it'll be do as I do. So what are some of the things that you passively observed about money? Uh, passive observation about money. Hmm. I would say that um, growing up, I was on the swim team, and uh, swimmers have the tendency to be, uh, swimmer parents have the tendency to be on the wealthier side. Uh, It's a very expensive sport. So um, I watched some of the parents um, shun other parents that didn't have as much money. So I actually became very liberal for a while uh, growing up because I didn't like what money, how money affected people and how it made them think about other people. So I resented money for a long time, um, about two years, actually. That's really interesting that you would make that observation. And this gives us so much great material to start working from. So I'm excited about this process. Are you looking forward to delving into the Keys to Riches? Oh, I absolutely am. I think that it will be a great experience for me, especially because I haven't um, really acquired enough money to need to manage it yet. So I will get those skills before... um, before it becomes important Mm -hmm. um, so that I'll be able to handle it when it does. Well, you've brought up some really interesting dynamics. And so it's, uh, I'm glad you're enthusiastic and optimistic about it, but I want to also uh, let you know that there's going to be some work involved because you're going to have to make some paradigm shifts and some interesting things about some of the programming you have and crack your own money code. So let's get started, and we will get into our first key for this radio show season, which is acceptance and affirmation. Fantastic. The Keys to Riches is a baker's dozen of financial concepts that not only teach you how to think like the rich and be in control of your own money, it also gives you specific techniques to create or fix your credit, eliminate debt, save and invest, building wealth holistically, all while transforming your current financial habits into healthy money management skills. And we do those one key at a time, one week at a time here on the the Unlock Your Wealth radio show. 
So if you're just joining us for the first time, we are so glad to have you. Thanks for stopping by. And if you're a regular listener, here we go. We are going to sharpen your saw this season and all in time for the holidays. And it's always a good time to do the keys now because it'll start preparing you to survive the holiday season and thrive in the new year. So I'm so excited about that. Now, our key this week is acceptance and affirmation. So we're starting all over at the very beginning. And there's two parts to this key. There's the acceptance part and the affirmation part. And the reason why we have it set up this way is because if we don't accept we have an issue with money, and it could be that we just don't know anything. We're young. We're like Lauren, and we haven't even gotten really our feet wet financially into the real world. She didn't even get her first job until she was 18. So that's just an example of her naivety in how money functions. And so how great of her to decide at this point, Let me try to figure out how to get my money mind right before I make mistakes. But even if you had make mistakes, it's okay. You weren't responsible for your programming, and you're going to learn all about what that means as we progress through the radio show season. Because you were programmed by others with regard to money management. And so, are you lucky? Did you get good programming? Or perhaps can we make some adjustments and make things better? But in any case, if we are in serious financial trouble... Staying in denial about it isn't going to fix it. It's actually going to make it worse. And it's tough because denial is this warm, fuzzy blanket that we like to snuggle up with and pretend like nothing is going on, really. And when we get like that, it just it wears us down. And then we start doing things that are counterproductive to us taking charge of things. And so we don't have to like where we are. If you think that that's what acceptance means, it's not. If you think about what Elizabeth Elizabeth Kubler Roth wrote Ross wrote in her book, which was on death and dying. It was about moving through the grief process, and so it sucks if we have to admit we screwed up. But hey, you know what? I've done that more than once. And you would have thought that I would have learned from the first time or the second time, and then I'm like, really, I'm here a third time. But you know, we got to let it go. And let go of our attachment to that punishment because that's not what's important. Taking charge here and now and letting go of those past decisions and being open to make changes is what it's all about. And so we need to focus on accepting where we are and that disgust that we might feel is going to be our impetus for change. Because let's face it, people don't change until the pain of change is less than the pain of staying the same. And so once you get uncomfortable about where you are, then you're going to be able to make a difference. And the only way to do that is to accept it. It's like looking in the mirror and saying, oh my gosh, my fanny expanded five sizes. If you never look in the mirror, then you don't know how fat your fanny got. If you never step on the scale, you have no idea how fat your fanny got. If you don't open your mail, you have no idea how far in debt you are. You'll have no idea how overdrawn your bank account is. So we have to get out of that hiding and into acceptance because when we can accept it then we can move on and address it so after we get out of that you're like okay great so like i totally accepted where i am heather now what does that mean because i still don't know what the heck i'm doing so we have to unravel all of this negative programming and we're going to start by not even worrying about what that negative programming is we're just going to try to get ahead of it And we're going to do that with an affirmation process. You're going to be like, oh my God, I've totally done that before and it totally didn't work. And it's probably because you had a totally crappy system for doing affirmations. And I'm going to give you some specific techniques to help you be successful because we have the six P's for affirmation success. And I wrote about this and yes, you can. And I've also got an audio series that's going to show you how to work these six P's for affirmation success coming out soon. And you'll be able to deploy these techniques to make successful affirmations and understand how they work. So just to give you a little idea of how the brain works, okay, we are biologically set up to fail at long-term management. I don't care what it is. Money management, weight management, career management, it doesn't matter. Because we still operate with a brain that was designed to elude saber-toothed tigers, Okay, so while we don't have to elude saber-toothed tigers, that survival brain is the first brain that processes information. Then we go to our emotional brain, our mammalian brain, and then that gives us a feeling about what's happening. And then, and only then, 
After that, as long as we maintain our composure and we don't get triggered into survival mode, can we access our logic brain where reason occurs? And so that's why we get stuck in these cycles. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of short circuit all that stuff because we've got some bad programming. You probably don't even realize how you affirm things in your life that are crappy. And you can say things that's like, I suck at money management. Well, if that's what you're saying, and then guess what? You are going to suck at money management because your brain is going to be like, oh, okay. It can't determine whether or not the information coming in is true or false. It just takes action. And so if you say, I suck at money management, it's going to do things to generate sucky money management. And behavior is all subconscious and this floats under your conscious awareness. And so we have to start reprogramming that. And we're going to do that by using these six P's to affirmation success. And I'm going to run through those real quick for you. And you can download the actual strategy at unlockyourwealthradio.com. If you surf over to the website and click on the This Week's Key tab, you'll find all of that good stuff. But there are six elements that must occur in all affirmations if you expect them to be successful. First, they must be personal, meaning it's got to be about I. You can't make an affirmation about your kid getting good grades or your husband or wife or significant other to stop spending money. You can only make affirmations about you because we're going to learn in this uh, season that we're going to learn about the things, the three things we can control and the other things we have influence over. But that's just a little tease for a future segment. So you keep listening. The second thing is we have to have our affirmations be present tense as if they're already occurring because then the brain, as it's forward thinking, it will start working on what is next. So it'll make whatever you say so and then start looking forward to the next thing that's going to happen. Positive. We want to affirm positive things because the brain doesn't hear the word no. Think about any time somebody has been running out the store to the grocery store and you say, Don't forget the carton of milk. And they go to the store and they come home and you're like, where's the carton of milk? And they're like, oh my God, I forgot it. The brain didn't hear the word no. It's not an action word. It heard forget. And so the brain heard forget the carton of milk. And so that's exactly what they did. So you want to have your affirmation be positive. So if you want them to remember to get milk, then you need to say, remember to pick up some milk. And guess what? You'll have milk. So we got to have them positive. Then they have to be within your power. So like I said before, you can't make an affirmation for somebody else and it has to be within your power. So saying I am a lottery winner isn't going to make you win the lottery because you have no control over how those balls pop up into that little bubble thing, okay? And if you do, then it's probably illegal and that's a whole different show. But it must be within your power. And so, like I said, we're going to talk in later episodes of the things that you can control. So it has to be within your influence. They also have to be precise. And they have to be specific because you can say, I want to be rich, but everybody has a different definition of rich. Uh, Somebody's definition who makes, you know, $500,000 a year probably says, I want to save a million dollars in four years. And it might be likely that they could do that. But if you don't make that kind of money, then, and you say, I want to be rich, and you don't have a specific amount of money, you know, maybe $5,000 in an emergency fund will make you feel rich. So you have to be specific and precise about the amount. So instead of saying, I want to be rich, say, I want to have $5,000 in my emergency fund at all times. That is doable. You also want to give yourself a deadline date in this precise. So I want to have $5,000 in my emergency fund saved by the end of the year or in the next 12 months on the 30th of September of 2014. And now you have a goal and your brain can start chipping away at that. And then we have this really great goal achievement key coming up in a couple of weeks, and that is dreams with deadlines. And so you'll learn about how all that is easy to implement if you just follow our simple steps. And then the final P in our six P's to affirmation success is practice. You must say them over and over. It's just like 
all of the music that you listen to that you can sing verbatim uh, off your subconscious. It just kind of the tune comes out of your head. You've got to get these so you can reprogram your method of thinking. Because right now you're probably saying, I, I, I don't manage money well. You know, I suck at money management. And we have to change that thinking. We have to affirm that we're great at it and we have to repeatedly expose ourselves to it so that we become brainwashed into it. We're tricking ourselves. So we want to say that our, our affirmations several times throughout the day. So the first time we want to say them is at night right before we go to bed. And we actually would like, it would be better if you wrote them out every night right before you go to bed. You got the kinesthetic learning process. You've got your your brain set up that'll process and work on that all night long. So when you wake up in the morning rested and refreshed, your brain has tried to figure out how it is it's going to accomplish all these things that you're affirming. Then you want to replay those first thing in the morning when you wake up. Don't roll over and kiss the spouse. Don't let the dog out. Pull out your affirmation list. Wipe the sleep out of your eyes and say your affirmations out loud to yourself so you focus your conscious brain on your higher purpose of the day. It's not dropping the kids off at school, picking up the dry cleaning or any of that garbage that you've got going on. It's about your higher purpose, which is to be successful at money management because successful money management makes you financially free to make the choices you want to make in your life when you want to make them. And then anytime throughout the day you encounter negativity, somebody comes and rains on your parade or tries to engage you in their pity party. After you have that negative encounter, pull out your affirmations another time and go through them again to focus your brain again, not on someone else's misery, but on your higher purpose. And if it feels like that's all you're doing all day long is pulling out your affirmations sheet, trust me, I've been there. It seems like I'm in a crap storm some days, but you know what? I keep pulling them out and I keep going over and just say, this is part of the process, okay? And this is what you have to do if you want to start reprogramming yourself for success. Next week's key is take action, make assessment, and we are going to kick butt with that key because we're going to get engaged and start our organic assessment. But for this week's key, our key statement, key affirmation, and key action item, visit the website at unlockyourwealthradio.com and click on the This Week's Key tab. And for more in-depth interviews with money experts, strategies, and members-only tools to fix your credit, get out of debt, and have more money and happiness, do what other savvy listeners have and visit UnlockYourWealthRadio.com, where you go to get your money mind right so your wealth and happiness will follow. Become an Insiders Club member today at the website. For Unlock Your Wealth Radio, I'm Heather Wagonhalls. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com is produced by Heather Wagonhalls and the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com and its affiliates are copyrighted 2013 with all rights reserved. For more information on the Keys to Riches Financial Wellness Series, please visit our website at www.unlockyourwealth.com. 